Hello everybody, this is Chris and this is my channel Barn on 11 Night 70. Thank you as always for taking the time to check out this video and hear what I have to say and I hope you will share this with somebody that you want to basically start to teach what is going on and what they are doing to basically continue to help self-destruction of this country, this, this, this whole planet. And the killer of this planet is not going to be a nuclear war. It's not going to be a meteorite. It's not going to be some zombie apocalypse, although they are entertaining for movies. It's going to be the world debt collapsing. The reason being is, there's an old saying that says, you know, if you don't, re if you don't research history, you're doomed to repeat it. And we are in a part of history that is basically the accumulation of all the tricks and scams over the centuries that are being performed to this day that is ultimately going to destroy us, and we're doing it willingly because of our ignorance. And it's not our fault to a certain extent because we're ignorant because we're not told about these things. But with the age of computers and internet access and our ability to check anything, most people would rather check out porn or the latest, you know, celebrity gossip than things like this. So I'm going to help to educate people and keeping it very basic. So I'm not going to go through every major detail because I've learned that if something is too confusing, people will be turned off by it and they won't pay attention. So as you can see here, there's a picture of a stack of credit cards, which we know the majority of people not only own one, but own several. The only thing that I remotely have close to it is a bank card. Because if I don't have, <clears throat> if I don't have the currency in my uh, account, and I don't have a bank account, I only have a credit, uh, federal credit union. There is a difference. But if I don't have the currency, I don't buy something. And what people need to comprehend is this, especially all the shoppers out there, because we're getting close to the holiday season, and they want you to spend all of your hard-earned money to buy things that you don't really need or will break down in a couple of months or become unpopular in the next six months or out of date to get you to continually spend. They'll get you new and improved things every time and get you to spe keep spending your currency. Majority of people put themselves in debt and have no idea how this country and countries throughout the world have been scamming people with this credit system. It's one of the biggest destroyers of countries since its creation. The way it originated, and I don't have exact dates, nor is it relevant, so I'm not going to get that detailed like I said, but it all started a couple of hundred years ago with the British Empire. Now, has anyone ever wondered why the British Empire, which is a small country with very limited amounts of resources, I mean, they don't have coal, they don't have oil, as far as I know, they don't have gold, platinum, silver, they don't have major resources. A lot of the things that they've had throughout the centuries, they've had to import. So if you know about the history of war, before this certain period, a couple of, centu a couple of centuries ago with uh, Great Britain, countries used their resources, whatever valuables they had, whether it be gold or spices or artistic ability, whatever, they used their resources to be able to purchase things so they could create weapons, pay an army, and build up their strength or their defense. So you were limited to what your area had. Now, with Great Britain not having a lot of resources, does anyone ever wonder how Great Britain became a world-dominating power, a small little country who basically could take over all of Europe with its ability and its armies and navies, its fighting force? Well, what happened was, and again, I don't remember the king's name, and it's, it's irrelevant. You guys, I'm going to give you the basis points. You guys can search it deeper to get the, the minor fill in the blanks because they're really irrelevant to what I'm trying to teach. But one of the kings was approached by a banker. And what the banker said to the king was, we will give you credit so you can build the most massive army without having the need for resources. 
That is how England became a world-dominating power so quickly and for so long, because they were the only country, and they were the first country, to be able to build up their army, navy, their military, their defense systems, their weapons, based on credit. And with credit comes an unlimited supply. So just imagine if you were a king of a country and you were presented an opportunity to be able to go well beyond your ability to create an army that would not only defend your country from any nation's attack, but to be able to conquer others so you can gain their products, their services, as in slavery, their territories, their land, their people. And you could do it endlessly. Wouldn't you want that opportunity and see it as kind of the goose that laid the golden egg? So that is how they were able to develop their military system. They based it on credit and they were the only country that did it. Everyone else based their military forces, their defense systems, their weapons, their castles, etc., on the resources they had that they could sell or trade to be able to build up what they had. So they were limited to their resources. Great Britain was limited to how much they wanted to borrow. So the king went on a spending spree, and who wouldn't? Just imagine if you or your wife or your spouse or your friend or whatever got a credit card in the mail that said unlimited credit. You don't think people would take it and go on a spending spree and buy a bunch of things that they couldn't afford? People do that today. Here's the problem. When you borrow money, or quote-unquote money, because any anything that's not backed by anything is what's called a currency. There's a difference. You have to research, and I'm not getting into that here. I don't want to be making it too complicated. But research the difference between currency and money, because there is a difference, and what you hold in your wallet or your purse or your bank account is not money. But one thing that banks do and have done is they have a thing called interest. We're all aware of that. If you've ever borrowed money or had a credit card, you know that if you borrow $100, you don't pay back $100. You pay back $100 plus whatever the interest is, depending on the interest rate. Now, the way the banks create extra currency for themselves is when they create this so-called well, we'll just call it currency, they only create the principal amount. Now, what does that mean? It Let's say you borrow $100. That $100 is the principal amount. So let's say there is no money in existence, and a bank comes along and says, Hi, I'm a thing called a bank. I have $100 that we've made. Would you like to borrow it? You will have all the money in the world. Well, if you borrow that $100, the loan that they write for you, the 100 is the principal amount. That is the amount borrowed. Well, in any loan, you have to pay back interest. Now, if the principal amount is all they create, example, the $100, let's just say, like I said, there's only $100 in existence. How do you return $100 and $110? Well, you have to borrow more money or more currency. And they won't say, oh, you need an extra $10 here. We'll give you an extra 10 But even if they do that, you are going to have to pay interest on now $110. And again, they will only create the principal amount. So the principal amount would be $110. But when you get your next statement, it's going to say $112.50. So you have to keep borrowing to keep paying back, and it never ends. So what happened with this king is eventually the banks came a-calling and said, okay, you need to start paying your debts. Oh, you borrowed, let's say, a million pieces of credit? Here's a million dollars in gold and treasure and all the things I sacked. And the bank will say, thank you. Now we need the interest. Oh, well, I don't have that. I gave you everything that we had, everything that's in existence. 
Well, that's all well and good, but you still owe interest on this loan payment. You could borrow more, and it, the trend continues until eventually the banks took over and owned the Bank of London, which became a separate country in the city of London. Banks have this thing where they control a nation by creating a currency, giving it out freely to people. Well, the people that are the wealthiest, most powerful, because greed sets in rather quickly, gives them this whole amazing speeches, tricks them into thinking, oh, free money, until you have to pay it back. They have to pay it back with the interest that does not exist because the banks don't create it until you borrow more, thus continually forever putting you in deeper, deeper debt. So when you have a credit card, when you get a bank loan, you are borrowing money into existence or currency. I say money because old habits die hard. Because for a currency to be created, it has to be borrowed into existence. That's why after the Great Depression, there wasn't a lot of money or currency to go around because no one was borrowing it. Now, let me ask anyone a question out there. When it comes to the Federal Reserve, which I'm sure most of you are at least familiar with, what does the Federal Reserve create, produce? sell, manufacture. Do they do any of those things? Think about that. The Federal Reserve does not sell a product, does not create a product, does not manufacture a product, and yet somehow they have an unlimited supply of currency to give to not only our nation, but other nations around the world. Now, do you think they are doing this with the kindness of their hearts? Because knowing that all banks, and that's basically what the Federal Reserve is, it's a glorified bank that only deals with countries instead of individuals, they only create the principal amount, never the interest. So I can't speak for other countries. I'm only going to speak about the United States of America Corporation, which was taken over the same way that British King was when we could not pay our debts in the Civil War. We kept borrowing and borrowing until we ultimately became bankrupt in 1933. And if you know anything about bankruptcy, the banks will take your physical possessions. So, the Federal Reserve, which is a private-owned entity, it's a bank, who is not producing or creating anything, but has unlimited amounts of currency to hand out, only sends countries the principal amount. That is why in this country, the United States of America Corporation, you have a debt. We're 17 point something trillion dollars in debt, if not more. First of all, how do you become a wealthy nation when you owe money? A person with zero dollars is wealthier than a person who's negative 17 billion and continuing to go up. So anyone ever wonder about the debt ceiling and the fiscal cliff? They sound very scary. But what that is telling you, without any media ever explaining it, because if they explained it, then game over, people would be pretty pissed, is that the, this country borrows from, its, from a foreign bank, the Federal Reserve. It's not part of the United States. So I want you guys, if you have to pause the video, please do. And I hope you're watching this with somebody that doesn't know of this stuff because getting to know this stuff is the first step f towards any type of enlightenment, whatever level. I want you to stop the video for a second and get out a dollar bill and a coin. Now, of course, they have to be U.S. coins because I'm speaking only U.S. So if you have them, please do. Okay, so I'm assuming you have some kind of dollar bill and you have some kind of change. Now, if you notice on the $1 bill, $5 bill, $10 bill, $1,000 bill, they say on the Federal Reserve note. That's a bank note. That's basically like borrowing. It's a certificate. 
It's like a gift certificate. If you have a gift certificate, it's only valid if you use it. Otherwise, it's a piece of paper that's worthless. Same thing with a dollar bill. It's only valuable if you exchange it and give it to someone else who continues the Ponzi scheme. Now, do you? I want you to take that quarter, nickel, dime, penny, half dollar, silver dollar, whatever. Do you notice the word Federal Reserve anything on that change? Take a look. You will not find it anywhere there because the coins are made from the United States Mint. So the country U.S. has its own mint that makes change, but for some reason does not make dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, hundred dollars, thousand dollars, million dollars, trillion dollars. They take that and what they do is they borrow and pay the Federal Reserve through bonds. They sell bonds, which the Federal Reserve purchases with basically a blank check or digital numbers, because after all, they don't produce anything to create money. So they basically write a check or an IOU for these bonds, which in turn creates the currency that they make probably 10% of as actual physical dollars. The rest are just digital numbers placed into any kind of bank, which they distribute throughout the country. Now, they don't buy these bonds and do it from the goodness of their heart. They redeem those bonds, which create interest. So they buy bonds, and if you've ever bought a bond, you know you only pay a certain amount, which is less than what the bond is. So if you buy, for example, a $100 bond, it costs about $50 dollars. It will mature after a certain amount of time, and it will go way past the $100, depending on how long you keep it. The Federal Reserve is no different. They, bu they buy these bonds at discounted prices by writing a check or giving credit from something that they, from a bank that they don't produce anything. They just write numbers, and our country seems to be acceptable about this. No one ever questions that, or you'll never see that in a presidential debate. Well, you did with uh, a person named John F. Kennedy who wanted Executive Order 11110. It looked that up. Google Executive Order 11110, four ones and a zero. He wanted that very same U.S. Mint that creates U.S. coins to make U.S. dollars, which means we wouldn't have to pay interest because we weren't borrowing it. And he got assassinated for that. Hmm. Kind of makes it sense, doesn't it? So our country, because the people at the top make plenty of money. That's why you will never see a poor president, a poor senator, a poor congressman. They get lots of that money or currency to keep their mouth shut. So we are getting the bill from the banks who are the stockholders and partial owners of the Federal Reserve that we borrow from. Now, again, they only produce the interest. I'm sorry, the principal amount. So every time you see our debt going higher and they talk about the fiscal cliff and the debt ceiling because it scares people because they have no clue what it means, but it sounds scary because the media loves using fear to control you. That's why there's nothing but bad news and things that frighten you on television and you're watching programming but what they don't explain to you is when they say things like the the fiscal cliff and the debt ceiling what they're telling you is the amount of money that they borrowed has reached their limit and they don't have enough currency to be able to pay the debt at least the interest part which is roughly around $350 million, I think, every year or every month or something. At this point, I don't even pay attention to it because it's so ridiculous. And they passed us the bill called taxes. So it's never going to stop because as long as you spend using your credit cards, borrowing money for loans, buying things you can't afford, you are helping the system. That is why any time I earn any type of currency from my, my business, I convert it to things like gold, silver. Even like with my comic book channel, I am buying physical assets 
that will retain value when a currency loses all its value. Because when you research history, and I highly suggest you do so, every single currency since the days of the Roman Empire, who basically started the whole nationalization of the amount of silver in their coins, every currency fails. Now, the reason there was never a world collapse from it is the fact that a country here, a country there, another country there, a few countries throughout the world would be doing these kind of quote-unquote scams where they would take away the actual resources that gave it value and gave you a trinket that looks very similar to what it used to be. Because remember, when you had dimes, quarters, half dollars before 1964, they were filled with silver. And before that, in the 1800s and early 1900s, coins were made of solid gold. Well, silver is cheaper than gold, isn't it? So they took those coins and they turned them from gold coins to silver coins because silver was easier, easily accessible and a cheaper metal to acquire. Well, do you have any silver coins today? No. You have copper. And not even that anymore. Remember when copper was in pennies? Well, zinc is a lot cheaper than copper. So eventually, they'll have wooden nickels or plastic nickels or just go straight credit card because it, plastic's pretty cheap. So they steal the wealth from the people by by starting out with physical gold and silver. Look throughout any history. They start with the actual physical metals. Then, as people get used to it, they take away the metal and replace it with something that looks very similar because a quarter from 2015 looks pretty darn similar to a quarter from 1935 or 1938 or 1964. The only difference is on the edge, the today's quarter, you'll see a little bit of a brown because of the copper they filled in. But back then, before 1964, or before 1965 actually, there was no copper rim because it was made of 90% silver. So, but it looks the same. And the same thing with your dollars. They now say the Federal Reserve note. At one time, they actually wrote silver certificate, which meant they were backed by silver. And before that, they had gold notes, which meant those bills were exchangeable for actual physical gold. But the dollar today looks the same as a dollar from the 1930s, doesn't it? Except for a few words. So you don't really pay attention to what they are stealing from you. So why would I start this video saying what would ultimately destroy the world would pretty much be the debt? Well, like I was saying, the reason that we haven't had any world situation like that throughout history, even though every currency has collapsed, is only a few were doing it here and there. While some were taking themselves off a of gold or silver or, or precious metal standard, there were others that were still doing it. So when the two or three or four different currencies collapsed, there were others to go on and continue. Well, ladies and gentlemen, since 1964, I believe, and correct me if I am wrong. No, it's 1971. I apologize. It's been a little while. Richard Nixon convinced the entire world to take their monetary systems and take away any gold or any precious metal backing. Which means they all are dependent upon each other. So if one falls, they will all fall. That has never happened in recorded history. And they are going to promote Christmas because they want you to have fun. Although if you look at Christmas, Christmas is based on a pagan ritual that the early Christians would attack people in Europe and see these, these paganistic holidays and take them over through the wonderful tips of their swords and make them their own. I mean, look at the holiday Easter. Easter has to do with a fertility god, a fertility goddess, 
That's why eggs are relevant in Easter, because women have eggs, don't they? Not physical eggs, but in the womb, there is an egg. It has to be fertilized. And the usage of a bunny is the fact that a rabbit is a symbolism for sex, for reproduction. You ever hear the old expression that, you know, they blank like rabbits? So people ever wonder why they have chocolate-covered Easter eggs and chocolate-covered bunnies and wonder what that has to do with supposedly a Jesus holiday? It has nothing to do with Jesus. It's a pagan holiday, just like Passover. Passover has nothing to do with what you think it does. It has to do with the fact that the sun is passing over the winter solstice over into the constellation of Aries the Ram, which is why they sacrifice the lamb. As crazy as these things sound, it's only crazy because you're not familiar with them. Go to any kindergartner and start talking Latin to them, and they will look at you like you have 12 heads. Go to a first grader that's just learning how to count to 10 and start teaching them quantum physics. They will look at you like you're an alien. It is no different with people today when they hear things they are not familiar with. Their first response is to say, oh, that's crazy. They're counting on you to say, oh, that's crazy. Instead of saying, oh, let me look into that. Let me use the logical side of my brain and verify this to be true or not. Because as a concerned parent for my children's future or even my own future, I think this would be something important to investigate. When was the last time you heard any television network ever say that? Instead of just reading from a cue card. So if you appreciate this kind of information, sharing it is a must. Researching is a must. The days of attacking someone's credibility based on lies, rumors, exaggerations, and over-dramatizing situations from one perspective has to end. Because when it falls, and it's not if it falls, it's when it falls. It's like a volcano. When a volcano is, a, is active, it could take hundreds of years. It may even take thousands of years, but eventually it will, will erupt. Ask anybody that's a living founder from the original people of Pompeii. Oh, wait, there aren't any because they all died in their sleep living under an active volcano that basically erupted and they all died where they slept. And here's the thing people have to understand. When a situation happens, and this is not doom and gloom, this is not fear porn, this is reality. When a situation happens, it doesn't matter if you are safe for 50 years, one day can ruin everything. And when this economy collapses, and again, we're not doing anything different. This whole world is right now is not doing anything different than our ancestors have done for thousands of years, where there was a 100% failure rate in their economies. When it happens, people are going to wake up one day and see on the news that their bank accounts have been frozen, their assets are gone, everything they left in their safety deposit boxes no longer have accessibility, and your money is worth nothing. What will you do then? And there's an old saying, because some people have said, oh, well, nothing's happened yet, or you've been talking about this for years. Well, there's an old saying. Better to be 10 years too early than 10 seconds too late. So enjoy your credit cards. Enjoy your bank accounts. Enjoy taking your money and wasting it on frivolous things. Because if it happens in our lifetime, and I can't guarantee it will, there are going to be millions, if not billions, of people who will be homeless, have no money, have no ability to feed themselves or take care of themselves or shelter themselves, and there will be the wealthy people who have prepared for this for all occasions to say, oh, come on in, we'll take care of you. You just got to work for me. Stop being a debt slave. Anytime you make any decent amount of money that you can afford or currency, because that's what it is, because they don't hand you anything. When you get a paycheck, they don't hand you. Let's say you make $1,000 a week. They don't hand you normally $1,000 in cash, do they? They either give you a check 
or a direct deposit. So what did they give you other than a piece of paper? They gave you nothing. And the banks, through a thing called fractional banking, can actually make up to 10 times the amount that you've borrowed in invisibly made money out of nowhere, out of thin air. So if you borrow $100, they could take 10 times that amount, or I think it's up to 90% of that amount of money, and borrow, lend it to someone else. Now, when you have to pay back your loans, you have to have physical money bills in your account because you can't just write a check if you have nothing to back it up with, but yet the Federal Reserve can, and our country borrows from it. But you can't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. And you better watch out. Better not cry. Better not pout. Because they see you when you're sleeping. They know when you're awake. They know if you've been good or bad. So be good, for goodness sake. So keep buying your presents and keep buying your toys. Keep making it happy for all the little boys, girls and boys. One day the money will fall. That's about the best poem or little thing I can do. But I hope you, hopefully you'll get my point at this point. I'm trying to educate people with the truth of a Ponzi scheme that has forever been enslaving people through debt. And we are willing participants. Like I've always talked about the 13th Amendment, about slavery. It's involuntary servitude. If you know this stuff and you continually use and, bu- you, and get more and more credit cards, then you are volunteering your servitude and you have no right to complain when you know the truth or have the ability to start searching for the truth. So they are counting on you to think this is crazy. They are counting on you to say, oh, this person's trying to ruin my Christmas. I just want to have fun. Well, you know, right before they slaughter a cow, they feed it very well. Make sure it gets nice and fat. Keep getting fat, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I do everything perfectly. In this corrupt world, you can only do so much. But there is a reason why I don't work for any other companies. I work for myself. There is a reason why I don't have a bank account and only have a federal credit union. There is a reason why I don't have credit cards. I have one bank card and that is it. So the more you minimize, the more you are helping to fix the problem. Because until people wake up from this reality, they are going to continue to borrow more and more of this currency where they only get the principal amount. The Federal Reserve buys U.S. bonds at a discounted price and then turn them in when they mature with interest expected to be brought to them, which is through our taxes. If you think your currency goes for bridges, roads, and schools, you are the prime candidate for a person who believes everything they are told. It goes to paying back an endless debt. So when they continue to borrow more and more, the currency becomes weaker and weaker. So the prices that you see on all the items that you need to survive, they're not getting higher and more expensive. It is the currency, because they overprint it, makes it less valuable so you need more and more of it until it gets to the point where things look so expensive you can't afford a loaf of bread anymore look what happened to the germans in world war one research history because if you don't research history you're doomed to repeat it and if people want to label me the bad guy or the crazy one for simple fact and truth that you can easily get off your lazy behind and verify then those people are either part of the program are just so stupid they are beyond comprehension and communication. That's all I'm going to say about this. If you appreciate this stuff, you will share this with other people. You will smack people in the head and make them listen. You will be one of the people who will verify these things. You will spread truth. Because if no one else wants to, then why the hell are you guys complaining? 
And to the people out there that just want to buy the latest iPhone and the latest fashions and go on those wonderful vacations because it makes them happy and you just want to party like it's 1999, you're part of the problem. Stop helping the very people who are enslaving you. And if you think voting in the next president, which, by the way, you're not voting anybody because votes don't count. I already have videos explaining this fact. But if you think the next person is going to come along and save the day, then, like they say, a fool and their money is soon parted. Wasn't Obama supposed to be the savior from Bush? Wasn't Bush supposed to be the savior of whoever? They're always making promises. They've made promises since day one. And people have short-term memory. That's why they distract you. And that's why they frighten you. That's why they entertain you. Because they know a person's capacity to have a memory lasts for about three seconds until something else comes along and distracts them. That's why you're always distracted by some kind of, you know, breaking news or some kind of tragic story or some kind of amazing entertainment. You know, there's an old story about a farmer who was starving And he had a pond in his backyard, and he would always find a bunch of ducks in the summertime would just hang out at the pond. And he's like, oh, would I love a duck dinner. But every time he tried to even get close to them, they would fly away. So he came up with an ingenious plan to start leaving bread and start feeding them. And over time, the ducks got used to being hand-fed, and they were... Instead of flying south for the winter, they would stay there because they started getting fed, and they didn't white make that trip when they could get food right there. And they got so big and fat that they could, at one point, no longer fly. And the owner would pile bread along a trail into the house. You could stay warm. I'll feed you. Just come on in. I'll take care of you. Look at how... Throughout the years, I fed you and took care of you and protected you from the bad elements. And the ducks walked in and wobbled in one by one. And that farmer had one hell of a duck dinner. Wake up, people. I know a lot of you do not like to hear these things. It's like having a most beautiful dream where you are dreaming about being the beautifulest person in the world and having all these people loving and adoring you and having sex anytime you want and you're a superman and you could fly and it's just an amazing dream but you're asleep in your house with your house on fire and if you don't wake up you're going to burn so how good is that dream if you can never live it and that's why they call it the american dream because like a famous comedian once said because you have to be asleep to have it thanks for watching guys